Good evening, this is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society and I want to talk to you a little bit this afternoon about a very interesting case. It was a young lady who had a cleft palate and it was probably treated when she was quite young and it ended up with her, she ended up with a class three and she's missing a one tooth and has a malformed uh, lateral on the other side and missing a lateral on the, I think it's the right side. And uh, uh, it's a very interesting case and a bunch of things uh, here to do. And we move the upper front teeth forward to solve the class three problem and uh, bringing these teeth forward, we use a lip bumper in doing that. And this is real good orthodontics. You, you, you take your lip bumper and put it in there and you push it out in front of the tissue here where you're moving the teeth. And this lets a, a soft vascular bed go ahead of the, uh, the movement of the teeth. Uh, it's an interesting thing for all of the stuff that's uh, brought into this. And then I'll try to explain a little bit about the, uh, how you deal with the cleft on this. Let's get into this and I'll try to go as fast as we uh, can. And here is the young lady. Now she ends up with a deep skeletal bite also. In other words, her chin is up close to her, too close to the nose. Uh, you don't notice it too much in this, but from the side view. And there's also a, a dress, uh, drastic difference in the sides of the face. If you uh, drew down through here and you look at this side and this side over here, they're quite, quite different and the mouth takes a little angle up like this. Uh, in doing the case. Now you can do some of this, uh, correct some of this, but a lot of this is very difficult uh, to correct even in uh, surgical procedures uh, that you do that. Let's take another look here at the uh, cleft. Now the, the cleft was done right in this area when she was just probably a very young child you know, and trying to restore that. When you're doing a cleft, uh, I've got a case that we've shown in there. You have to cut the periosteum, that's right, the covering right over the uh, bone structure. Uh, I'm gonna draw something here and kind of illustrate what we, uh, in the cleft, you'll have bone structure coming from one side and coming back like that. And over here, we'll come in from another direction and come back. And what the surgeons do, periosteum just doesn't stretch very easily. And uh, if you've got a tooth in the periosteum, you cannot move it. I mean, a tooth in the bone structure by the periosteum, you cannot move the tooth through the periosteum. So the surgeons come in and they cut this periosteum somewhere along in here and they pull these two teeth pieces together and sew it back here. And then they fill this area in with, with a bone. Now in the case that I scrubbed in on and watched uh, them do, uh, they took a, a, covered the hip, you know, and took some off the uh, plate of the hip of the edge of it and ground it up, mashed it up and put it in this area right here. And then these two pieces of the periosteum, they brought in here, but they weren't long enough. So they had to cut it from back around like this and stretch it out and then sewed it together. And now when this grows back, you can move a tooth through this area right there but you cannot move a tooth through the periosteum. You'll know, get up there to it and it just won't go past it. Now you might be able to push the periosteum in some uh, cases like that, 
but you cannot take the bone of the, the root of the tooth and move it actually through this periosteum that is uh, built around like that. This is just something you ought to realize you can do. Now they've done this operation and brought these two, the upper periosteum layer and the lingual periosteum layer, so you can move teeth across that area once that uh, is done. So, but this side of the mouth is different height and everything, and so it leaves us at an uh, angle like that. Then you can't go in and it's very difficult to try to shorten one and lengthen the other one. But we are going to try to increase the vertical height of the face. And I'll show you how we do that. We're pretty successful in lengthening the vertical height of the face. In fact, in a high angle case, it's hard to keep from lengthening. It makes it look worse. So you try to close it in some in high angle uh, cases like that. And then in low angle, especially skeletal class twos, uh, where they've got a low angle like that, you try to open this up. And then we try to show you that uh, deal. And we use, uh, I don't show a picture of the lip bumper, but I'll show you where we move the teeth with that. Now here we start out, uh, we've got a low angle case. In other words, uh, look how close the uh, nasal structure is to the chin down here. So we like to lengthen this out some. And so how we do is we put a bite plate in here on the bottom and open this bite, and then we put force on it to push the teeth up, and that pushes the molars down, and we push these teeth down, that pushes these up, and whatever these go down and whatever this goes up, you're going to increase this height of the face in here, and it makes the person look better. Now. I didn't get a lot of pictures on this young lady. You get busy and, and somebody comes in that you really want to x-ray and you're, you're snowed under and you can't <laughs> take off and go uh, x-ray them. So I don't have all the pictures or you can't take off and photograph it. And I like to photograph my own uh, cases if I, if I possibly could. So I'm going to... Let me erase that, and then we'll go to the next picture. Now, here is a defect in here, but it's not opened into the sinus up in this area, and it's got a little deformed tooth in here, which we'll keep in this crown to fill this gap, you see. Now, this is a cuspid right here and a central, so we're going to open this, uh, like we'll push this back, push this cuspid back and the central back over here and open this to where it matches this on this side. And so we'll have to jump it out of the class three. And this is where they cut the periosteum and sewed it on one side, the lingual side, and also sewed it together on the uh, labial side and put uh, you know, bone chips in there but to fill that area up. It's a complicated, uh, pretty bloody like operation uh, doing it. Now we've got class one pretty much both areas back of the mouth here class one but we're missing the wisdom teeth. Let's erase that and go on to the next uh, thing here. Now you can look at it and see it's the central, upper central teeth are meeting behind the lower centrals. Now the upper centrals come down to here somewhere. Uh, now, when we <clears throat> get ready to move these teeth in a forward direction, we run a lip bumper across this part of the mouth that's uh, connected up. No, I would have a D like that and it goes back in the molars over here, something like that. We expand that and keep this pad 
out away from the tissue. It, it doesn't want to touch the tissue. Maybe a millimeter and a half or two millimeters of clearance in there. And as the teeth move forward, you can get a vascular bed to go ahead of the teeth. And with that, bone structure forms in there and the bone structure actually moves with the teeth. And it'll do that even without the lip bumper in there to some extent if you don't put a lot of pressure on that bone. Now a kid sucking a thumb or you take a clarinet player and he prizes that out like that, the teeth will move out. I've had people 40 years old that uh, move the front teeth out just putting a lozenger and trying to push on it and hold it up in their mouth with their tongue. And it moved these, this whole area, the bone structure, teeth and all forward in there without the lip bumper. But I like to put the lip bumper, it makes it easier and the teeth will move out faster. And so when we do these class three cases, that the bottom jaw is sticking out further than the upper jaw, but we come in here with class three elastics and hook onto these bottom teeth and go back up here and hook on that. And we do that in our retention and put pressure on this to come out. And we like to have a lip bumper up in here so the movement is easier for the teeth to come forward like that. So there's just so much to learn on a case like this. And uh, uh, there's just a, a ton of, of adult orthodontics. I don't call this adult orthodontics. You know, you, you can send them in, they'll do a surgical procedure and cut this loose and move it out and do a lot of other things to do this. But you can do it uh, non-surgically and, and change this facial structure quite a bit if you just take some time to do it with. So let's go on here to another uh, picture and see what happens. Uh, now, we're gonna open this bite. In other words, I wanna increase this dimension between the bottom of the nose and the end of the chin down here. I wanna give her a little more facial structure that she needs here. And I'll go back here and, and look at that picture. I mean, anybody can tell you need more of this. In other words, drop the chin down further down here and then increase it in here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a block on these lower teeth and have her bite down and stop there. And these teeth won't even touch back here in the back. I'll show you that in just a minute. And then we're gonna put pressure on this molar to shove these teeth up and there's no contact here, so the molar comes down more. And the same thing, we depress these teeth, and the molar will have to go up to get the force to push this down. If there's no contact in here, the two, the molars, the bias, and whatever you have joined together back here, move toward one another, and this moves away from one another, in the front of the mouth. Now you can kind of see some of the complexity of doing a case like this. And, and it's, you just learn so much uh, doing it. And learn how to util utilize these little lip bumpers. It'll make moving these teeth forward much easier and better, really, and bring the bone right out, out there. So let me erase that. and. We'll go on back here. Now, I open the mouth that wide and that will allow me to jump these upper front teeth over the lower front teeth. So I'm gonna bond something on the bottom teeth down here and I've got a gap between the molars, the bicuspids and everything. And so we're gonna to try to force these teeth up with the intruding wire and these down with the same type of intruding wire 
and for this to go down you got to have exactly the same force for this to go up over here on this side of the mouth. Now if you don't want this to open you put a block in here and have them chew it on this like mad and this will not move toward one another and yet this will move away from it and you can open you can open a bite dentally and not open it skeletally and this is what people need to really learn if you get a high angle case that you don't want to make it any worse you after you get past a certain point here it looks bad and so you don't want to do that so I want people that study these cases to learn how to raise and lower the vertical dimension of the face out here and that's what de what determines the vertical dimension is the amount of force that's erupting in here and the amount of occlusion that bites down in here and you comes to a balanced area and that's where a person develops the, the lower third of the face and it's normal you know you chew enough to keep it down and then it erupts with enough force and if you pull out the teeth in here these will uh, pull up these these will grow up and that happens it's obvious within studying dentistry seeing that happen all right we i don't get the finishing stuff of this case but we're down like that and the, you can see those here. Now we're going to have to open this gap and as we open it we're going to bring all this forward here and jump the bite and have a gap over here as big as the gap on this side and just say save this little tooth we'll crown it and we'll put some type of uh, bridge or else a oh, Maryland bridge usually when we do it early like this uh, or you can put it uh, you, you don't want to put an implant in it's on some uh, growing child though of course this young lady is not a growing child right here okay let's get on down here and here this in the lowers lined up pretty good but we got a space over here and we'll pull that together and get this uh, lower arch lined up pretty good now here is a bonded a block of acrylic it's soft material and we can take it off you don't even have to have that much but you have to be kind of out, you ought to be out in front of the teeth a little bit as you bite on this. Now when you put this in here, you're going to put pressure up here in the anterior part and this pressure, there's nothing touching back here in the back. Okay, nothing touching back here. So where does the pressure have to be distributed? And it's in the temporal mandibular joint, right where the the condyle comes in front of the the fossa back here and the disc that's in between there the muscles are right in front of that disc and to close out here we say 10 pounds of force back in here this might have to be 25 or 30 pounds of force back here on the uh, jaw on the jaw joints and that's why the tissue of the retro, this uh, disc is its connective tissue and right where the pressure hits when you chew down here it has no blood vessels or no nerve endings uh, in that part and it has to be fed by the synovial fluid which is developed distal to it in the the synovial fluid in the retrodiscal tissue it squeezes this highly uh, lubricating material onto the joint along with the food structure goes in there and de delivers the food carries out the waste uh, it's ungodly complicated and uh, uh, nobody 
I don't think anybody really knows how it can work like that, but it does. Now, I'm uh, in my now I'm on going on 94, and I still have a disc back in here that are working, and that's tough. And I've chewed everything under the sun you know, during my lifetime. So this is just something of how marvelous human beings and other animals are, are made up to take all that force and everything. So, all right, so we put pressure here. We've got spring opening this gap, and we got spring over here opening this gap, and so we're pushing back on this, and we're pushing forward on these, and we got a lip bumper, but I don't show it in here. It goes back in, in uh, this area here, and it would go into that and run run interference for this tissue right here to go out. So the, you can get some idea of the complexity of cases like this and the things that you can learn. We've learned, I think, six or seven different things or you cover in here, you know, opening space, missing teeth, biting in the anterior, opening the bite back here, putting pressure on the jaw joints back here. Uh, also, wearing a lip bumper here, taking the pressure off. Uh, this, this little old case is loaded with stuff to learn. And I hope that uh, people, wherever this goes, and I have no idea <laughs> where it'll go, but wherever it does go, does go, uh, these are the same thing. People are people. I don't care where you uh, have them. I worked in Africa for three years, and they're the same way there. They like to have their teeth fixed, too, just like anybody. We had people in, in uh, places like uh, Bad Nigeria from all around the world, you know, they came there to do different work. Uh, people want to look good. They want to chew good. But when it's in a war situation, uh, a bad situation, uh, people forget about their teeth and just try to survive. You know, so I hope we don't get into any problem like that. But anyway, let's go ahead and see. So here we open this bite. Now the force that's gonna, we're gonna come in here and put these intruding wires on here that here, pull them up bringing this down, it'll be up here, bring it down, hook it to the teeth. It tends to force these teeth up and these teeth down right over here. And these don't have any occlusion, so they come down a good bit, and that increases this vertical height of the face out here. And I hope that it gets across to people that are uh, trying to learn something about doing some real top-notch orthodontics, and you cannot do this stuff with plastic shells. Uh, it, you can do a lot of different things with them, but it's just another tool set that you can work in straightening the teeth. All right, here we got this space right here, and now this is an intruding wire that you see on top of this, but actually it goes way up like this, we pull it down, hook it to the EC. Now what it picks up here, it pushes down over here. It's exactly the same force going down as it has up. So now if you put those, you can't hook them up to this block, you see. But we've got a lot of occlusion on that block pushing it down. And you can open the bite that way. So. As we do this, we open those up and we'll make room enough in there that you watch this space right here and we'll try to keep it this about the same. Uh, the palate is really deformed in this uh, young lady. You can see it going down like that. People are born with these cleft palates and they operate on them real quick. And that's the lower arch. And this is class one on one side. This is 91, we started it. And that's 
uh, 91 and the anterior part of the mouth will open in the gap and this is 91 we got the close bite and we open it up and jump the bite there we've got the bite open and we close back down without that the teeth are coming in pretty close contact but we've got this over on the right side of the mouth and there's class uh, on the side and there it is corrected and this is as far I'm sorry as I got with this case but we did finish it up and we got this lined up like that and that's 91 the lower now here is the little deformed uh, tooth you see and now we've got this open and we've got a false tooth and we bonded a bracket on it and put it in and torqued it and everything and you can't already tell the difference in there but now we've got this opened up and we've also increased this dimension of the face and we increased this across here on the front and the, the young lady won't look perfect but we've made her look a lot better than she was and so that's a kind of orthodontics there we are just about to finish uh, what we did but I didn't get uh, enough of this going here is a little that's a false tooth we put on we got this wide and we're trying to match up these deals and keep these in the center of the mouth right here and this is the end of it uh, that I have pictures of it but w this is one of the pictures of the start I don't have anything uh, back in the latter part of the treatment of this case but it's a most interesting case and you can learn a lot of, of stuff uh, working on patients like this so here's for hoping you'll do some of this and hoping it'll help you and I'm going to uh, try to close this out now and say uh, good evening and I hope that we'll see you again if I can find this mouse I want to close this so good night I'll see you later